Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is a, a series circuit and it's a practice question. So here we have a series circuit. Um, at this point what you can do is pause the video, uh, work through the question, and then you can restart the practice question, or I should say you can restart the video, and I will work through the question. Okay, welcome back. All right, so here we have a series circuit with one, two, three, four resistors. We can see that across uh, the resistor one is 1.9 kilo ohms. We're seeing that there's five milliamps going through resistor two. Resistor three is 2.1 kilo ohms, and we see that we have 40 volts across resistor four. And we have a total voltage, which we now know, of 100 volts. <coughs> now, the thing about the current, go and, and well, the thing about questions like this is that you, you have to um, figure out where you have two pieces of information, and with those two pieces of information, solve something else. We're using Ohm's law, E equals IR. And so you can see that if you have two pieces of information, you can solve the other one. And so that's sort of what you're looking for here. If the 5 milliamps is going through this resistor, it's going through every single one of the resistors because this is a series circuit. So that tells us that every resistor has 5 milliamps going through it. And the voltage drop across here, there's also a current going through that resistor. We know it's 5 milliamps. So here we have voltage, we also have current, so we could solve for res resistance. Here we have current and we have resistance, so we can solve for voltage. And the same here. So little by little we can work our way through this circuit. So let's solve for the voltage across resistor 1 which again is total current, which is our 5 milliamps, right? So IT equals 5 milliamps. Actually, that's a capital A. There's our IT. And IT times R1, so we have our 5 milliamps times 1.9 kilohms. I'm just going to put the 5 milliamps into the, uh, into the memory. So 5 exponent minus 3. And I'm going to store that in the memory because we're going to be using it a lot. There's our 5 milliamps and it's multiplied by 1.9. So it's kilo ohms, so it's exponent 3 equals 9.5. Volts. We're not able to solve for the voltage across R2, so we're just going to skip it. The voltage across 3 is again our total current, which is running through here, times resistor 3. So we have our 5 milliamps times 2.1 kilo ohms, which equals. Oh yeah, it's in memory. So we call our, our um, current from memory and multiply it by 2.1 exponent 3 equals 10.5 volts. And we know that E4 is 40 volts. Now since we know that the total voltage is 100 volts, we can solve for E2, so the voltage across this resistor, by subtracting all of these voltages from the total voltage, because the sum of all these voltages must be 100 volts. So then E2 equals 100 volts minus 9.5 volts minus 10.5 volts. Oh, yeah, minus our 40 volts. 
this is 20 volts, there's 40 volts, and we're subtracting that from 100, so that gives us 40 volts. So the voltage across E2, right here, is 40 volts. Right? So now we've solved for all of the voltages. Now let's go to the next page. I'm not sure that we need to carry the voltages with us, but let's just, I'll just keep the page handy. All right. Oh, yeah, let's just write it down. So here we have 40 volts. V1 is 9.5 volts. V3 is 10.5 volts. And here we have 40 volts. Okay. Now, what else can we do? We know our total current. We need to solve for R2 and R4. That's what we're doing. All right. So solving for R2 and R4, we know now that we have 40 volts across R2, and we have 5 milliamps going through there. So in order to solve for R2, we would use Ohm's law. We're solving for our resistance, so we're going to divide both sides here by I, or current. So we have R equals E over I. Now this is total current, and this is the voltage across resistor 2, which happens to be 40 volts. So we have 40 volts divided by 5 milliamps. So then 40 divided by, and again, our current is in memory, so we just recall it and divide, and we end up with 8 kilohms. Okay, so we have R2, which is 8 kilohms. Now notice as well, we already know this, that there's 40 volts across R4. So then R4 must be the same, right? It's got to be 8 kilohms. We again have 40 volts divided by 5 milliamps, and that's our 8 kilohms. So there we have R4. Now we've solved for the voltages across all of the resistors. Now the last thing to do is solve for power. So power 1, and I'm just going to use voltage times current. You can use this one if you want, but since we have both uh, voltage and power across all the resistors, we might as well just use that because it's simpler. So that would be E1 times our total current. And E1 we know is 9.5 volts. And that's multiplied by our 5 milliamps. We have 9.5 times our current. 47.5 milliwatts. Power 2. Voltage across uh, resistor 2 times the total current, and that was 40 volts times 5 milliamps. 40 times 5, it's going, oh yeah, we've got it in memory, don't we? And we have 200 milliwatts. Power 3, voltage 3 times total current. The voltage across 3 is 10.5 volts times our current. So 10.5 times our current equals 52.5 milliwatts. And power 4 has got to be the same as power 2 because the voltage is the same 
and the current is the same. So we have 40 volts across, resistor 4, and 5 milliamps. So then that is 200 milliwatts. Now let's add up our power. Okay. So, and we just need to add up the numbers. So 47.5 plus, let's make this 400, plus 52.5 equals, bingo, 500. 500 milliwatts. Now it's a good idea to do a check. So power total is E total times I total, 100 volts times 5 milliwatts, or sorry, milliamps. And we end up with 500 milliwatts. So here we are, we're all good. So this tells you that your circuit is okay. You've done everything right, all of these things add up, and so we know we're good, all right? So that was brought to you by Wise Guys, and I hope you have a good day.